Hello and welcome to another episode of MongoDB in 10 minutes or less. My name is Colin, I'm a senior solution architect at MongoDB, and in this video we're going to be talking about infrastructure as code, and I'm going to be showing you how to deploy multiple pieces of infrastructure using a single Terraform script. Um, so now, uh, I should caveat this by saying I can't promise that this particular video is going to be able to, to be lower than 10 minutes, but what I can promise is that it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, so with that said, I will also have a little bit of homework for you at the end. And um, the first person who completes uh, the, the homework uh, and shares your code in the comment section below uh, will win a $100 Atlas credit. So um, I will also share the GitHub link to everything that I'm going to be showing you for this Terraform script uh, in the comment section or in the description below. Um, so you can copy that there. So uh, specifically what we're going to do in this video with Terraform is we are going to deploy uh, an Atlas cluster, an AWS VPC, and an AWS EC2 instance, and then we're going to peer the VPCs between Atlas and, uh, and AWS, and we're going to do that all with one script. Um, so, you know, this is, uh, as I mentioned, commonly referred to as infrastructure as code. And, you know, why, why do this? Why use a tool like Terraform? So Terraform is great to, uh, to automate the manual workflows, right? You're, someone from your DevOps team is not having to go and deploy all of these environments individually, not having to maybe work with the networking team to, uh, to set up uh, access lists and, um, and routes, etc. Uh, so this is really something that, you know, once you have these scripts, you can reuse them uh, in the form of, you know, Terraform modules. Uh, and you can also, you know, it's not just for deployment, it's for effecting change. If you want to scale something up or modify an existing resource, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, and then finally, you can tear things down, which for whatever reason, that's what I have the most fun doing. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. You know, before we do, I, I want to mention um, some... Uh, terminology that you should be aware of specific to Terraform. Uh, so two components, resources and providers in Terraform. A resource is going to be any specific infrastructure, infrastructure object uh, that could be managed uh, or modified by Terraform. So for example, an IP access list entry, uh, a new VM or VPC, etc. So now a Terraform provider is going to be a plugin for Terraform that makes collections of related resources available. Um, and these provider plugins are also responsible for understanding the API interactions with various infrastructure providers. For example, AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, MongoDB Atlas, etc. So let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look here. So uh, first, I just want to show you, you know, what we have in AWS and MongoDB Atlas, both, you know, blank slates. So if we come in here, um, we have no existing EC2 instances. Uh, we have just our default uh, VPC. Uh, so just one VPC here. Um, and, uh, and again, we're going to be deploying a new one. So there's that. And then finally, we can see under peering connections, uh, we have old peering connections, but nothing that is active, right? These are, these are ones that I'd already kind of deleted. And then if we come back to uh, Atlas, uh, part of the script is we're going to be deploying a new, um, a new project in Atlas, and uh, I'm, I'm calling that cbear-new. So we can see as I search here, uh, that does not exist right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Terraform script. So, you know, this is going to be important because uh, it, this is actually kind of the, the meat of what we're doing, right? So, so a script, you can kind of think in Terraform, think of it as a recipe or a set of instructions that you are going to issue operations for. So we can see here, I have a couple main files. Uh, we're going to have one that's called atlas.tf. And now, uh, if you'll remember the terminology that I mentioned, we have the provider here. So we're calling MongoDB Atlas as the provider. And then we can see that I have our API keys uh, input as variables. And I'll go over the variable um, Terraform file here in a minute. Uh, so I have the public and private key being called as variables. And then once we have accessed the provider, in this case MongoDB Atlas, then we're going to go through our specific resources. So we can see, hey, you know, we want to create a new project and we want to call this cbear-new. And then another variable is the Atlas organization ID 
that will also be pulled from that variables file. And then we can see iteratively through this document, the next resource that we're calling is MongoDB Atlas cluster, where we are deploying a cluster and defining the region that we want to put it in, uh, the number of electable nodes. So in this case, it's a three node replica set. Uh, and then enabling backups, selecting the version, MongoDB 5.0, et cetera. Um, now we can see that we are deploying in AWS and that our initial disk size allocation is gonna be 10 gigs and that we are deploying a M10 tier in Atlas. Now we'll come down, we can see we're creating a user calling the MongoDB Atlas database user resource. Uh, we can see the network container that we are creating uh, for the VPC peering. And then we can also see some information here at the, at the bottom where we're actually calling the MongoDB Atlas network peering resource uh, and, and uh, implementing that peering between our AWS environment. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our second file here, which is going to be our AWS VPC.tf. So again, on this one, we are going to be calling the provider, in this case, it's AWS, and inputting our uh, API access keys, uh, again, as, as variables here. And then, similar to the other script, we're going through and we're calling resources, so AWS VPC, deploying a VPC, we're creating um, an internet gateway, and then we're creating an entry in the route table, and uh, then we're defining you know, a, a subnet, and a security group and uh, then finally here at the bottom we can see the last resource we're calling is AWS VPC peering connection acceptor and we can see that our auto accept is set to true so this means once we receive a peering request from our Atlas environment uh, that it will auto accept that peering request so now our next file here is going to be create EC2. Now this is actually going to be part of the homework, so take note of this. You know, this is deploying an EC2 instance, but I did not input the logic to, to specify which VPC it's being deployed in. Uh, and ideally, if you're going to be using this and you're creating a new database environment and peering the VPC, you're probably going to want to deploy that EC2 instance in the VPC. So your homework, should you choose to accept it, uh, is going to be to pull um, this off of uh, my GitHub that I'm sharing and modify it, you know, fork it and modify it and, um, and see if you can get this EC2 instance to deploy uh, in the VPC itself. Uh, so anyway, we can see that the resource is an AWS instance. Again, we don't need to recall the provider since that's already happened in this script. Um, we can see that we put in the AMI and uh, then finally, this is gonna be a T2 micro. So now, uh, the terraform.tf vars or tf variables. So this is gonna be the file where you actually input uh, your API keys and uh, things like, you know, other variables that you're wanting to call and reuse. Now obviously variables uh, are great because when you define them, then you can just call them throughout the rest of your, um, your files. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to show you what I actually have in here because yours is going to be different, right? So you are going to want to input um, these, uh, these values per your own AWS environment. You know, the, uh, the access uh, key that you create for AWS and Atlas will be what you input here. And you'll also pull things like your uh, Atlas organization ID, etc. And then finally, we can see that we have a variables.tf file. Now this is important because we're actually defining these variables, right? It's no good saying, hey, this is a variable and inputting a value uh, without defining it. Uh, so here we can see, you know, we have a variable for public key, uh, which is the public key for um, MongoDB Atlas, and then private key, also MongoDB Atlas private key. And then we are calling the access and the secret keys uh, for AWS. And then we have our you know, Atlas regions, our AWS region, and then we have variables for the database user, et cetera. So you know, this is the file that we're gonna be working with. Um, now, so let's go back and, uh, and let's see what this does. So I have this saved, I have the, the variables input. Uh, let me clear that. So now first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, Terraform init, right? You're gonna wanna initialize Terraform and you're gonna wanna navigate to the directory uh, where your uh, your scripts are, are located. And then uh, first thing we're gonna do is run Terraform plan. 
So Terraform plan is going to run through and it's going to do a couple checks and say, hey, you know, are there any errors if you, you know, um, misdefine a syntax or, you know, typo or, um, or you put in an incorrect key, incorrect value. Uh, the great thing about Terraform <clears throat> and, uh, and the outputs that it gives you for the error codes is that they're very specific. So it'll tell you the, the line item, the file, uh, where you need to go to check and see what's going on. Uh, so we can see here we did not have any errors. Um, and you know, if we run through this, we can see uh, a whole bunch of information uh, uh, you know, depending on which resources are being called and what we're doing. Now, one thing I want to call out here is in our files, we only called specific resources, but there's a long list of resources, you know, depending on the provider. And uh, we can see uh, a lot of these say known after apply. So we didn't call those resources in our scripts. We're not defining them. Uh, so, you know, the, the ones that we called are the ones that we have definitions here. So MongoDB major version, for example, we defined as 5.0, uh, things like that. <clears throat> so now, Scrolling down to the bottom, uh, we will see our plan. So this really tells us what's happening. Now, if you'll remember, I mentioned that a uh, great thing about Terraform is it's not just for deploying, uh, but it's also for modifying and destroying existing environments. So here, according to our plan, it says that we have 14 to add, zero to change, and zero to, to destroy. So it's already gone and checked these environments, uh, and it sees that there are no projects in Atlas uh, that are with the same name uh, or with existing clusters. Um, it can see that there are no VPCs that meet the parameters that we defined in AWS, uh, etc. So now what we're going to do is type Terraform apply. And this is going to run through one last confirmation screen where it's saying again, hey, are you sure you want to do this? Which is especially important if you're modifying or deleting something. You know, you want to be very careful with that. Um, so we're going to input yes. And then here uh, we are started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward uh, through this section, but I'm going to leave it running so you can see that you know I'm not uh, not cutting or, or making any changes. And we'll be back in you know 10 to 15 minutes, and um, and we'll see what we have. <laughs> All right, so after roughly 10 minutes, uh, the script is finished, and now we can see here that the application is complete. We have confirmed 14 resources were added, uh, zero changed and zero destroyed. So let's go ahead and take a look at our environments and see what we have. So let me refresh Atlas. All right, so now we can see that there is Seabird new. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Aha, we can see that we have an M10 that's been deployed in AWS uh, called cluster-atlas-terraform. Let's go ahead to database access. And then we can see that we have our Terraform user created with read, write, any database uh, permissions. And then network access, we can see that we do have a access entry, solder block for AWS VPC. And then peering, we can see that we have uh, an available peer. Great. So now let's go ahead and take a look on the AWS side. Let's go to uh, VPC first. We'll go to our VPCs. Great. We can see that we have two. And um, OK, great. So we can see that we do have a new one created. And let's go ahead and check our peering connections. Fantastic. We have an active peer, so now we can see that uh, we have peered the two environments. And now last, let's go ahead and take a look at EC2. All right, great. So now we have a running T2 micro. So now remember, for your homework, if you, uh, if you want to do that, uh, you, uh, your goal is to ensure that we can deploy this EC2 instance to the actual VPC, the new VPC that we just created. Um, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, and you know, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Uh, happy to talk it over with you. 
Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that, that was the kind of uh, activity. So, you know, in this, we deployed multiple pieces of infrastructure using a single script. Uh, and again, you know, the really cool thing, at least to me, about infrastructure as code is, is the reusability um, and just the simplicity of once you have uh, these scripts defined and created, then you can just make minor tweaks, modifications, update access keys, uh, and it's something that will just, you know, continue to streamline workflows for you. So I guess, you know, before we go, let's go ahead and, and, um, and see what happens if we make a modification to our, um, to our file and let's actually change one of the parameters. Um, so let's go in and let's, let's change our Atlas cluster, you know, instead of defining an M10, the only change we're gonna make is an M20. So I'll go ahead and save that. Pull this back up, get rid of this, and then let's do Terraform plan once more. And then it's running the checks. And there you go, perfect. We can see now on the second run of the plan, there's nothing to add, but there is one thing to change. Now that's gonna be the M20 that we pushed, um, and then nothing to destroy. Uh, so I'm not gonna run this change. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is run Again, my favorite part, uh, Terraform destroy. So, you know, it's gonna ask us if we wanna confirm, always be careful with this, uh, but it's running through and it's telling us, you know, hey, of everything we see in the script, these are the active instances, the active, active resources that we see to tear down. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and enter yes as our value. And then now it's gonna run through this. Typically this process is, is a lot faster um, but let's go back and let's see. Okay, we can already see changes are being deployed. Uh, this is being torn down. The project will be torn down. The VPCs, the EC2 instance, everything. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, you know, leave me some comments if you want to see anything else or if you have uh, suggestions for another video. And um, with that, thanks for watching.